Kiteshire Radio, keeping you informed. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Burby's 99.5 FM. Kiteshire Radio. Radio. Welcome to a very special edition of the Glen Lal Show with me, Melina Harris, and of course, Mr. Glen Lal. Today is Friday, the 5th of August, and the time is currently 7.21 p.m. We hope you're excited to join us as we tell it like it is. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand you over to the man of the moment, Mr. Glen Lal, who has prepared a wonderful presentation for you. Sir, are you ready to take it away? I can take it away, providing you don't take my jacket away to Mexico. <laughs> Only once you're done with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can lend you to go to Mexico. Let's, let's share it part-time. All right. Can live with that. Can live with that. Perfect. Can live with that. Namaste, Miss Harris. Namaste, sir. Namaste, Kevin. Namaste, guys. You said it's Friday, right? Yeah. I got to drink a glass of wine this afternoon. Of course. Yeah, I got to drink a glass of wine, Miss Harris, because um, I, I, I was taxed, <laughs> you know. I, I went into overdrive yesterday. Mm. <clears throat> yes. I really, really went into, into overdrive yesterday. And you may not know, Miss Harris, but Guyanese people, mm -hmm. Guyanese people love to see crime oh, yeah. on the front page of a newspaper. Or they love to go on social media to see crimes, you know, horrible accidents and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a humane thing. I don't know. I, don't know. I used to. I used to. I used to go crazy over crimes too. But um, I have noticed after 2015 the discovery of oil, like my entire um, <laughs> mental, <laughs> physical, and emotional, spiritual. Thinking has just evaporated, disappeared from crime. But um, I'm looking at a different dimension, different aspect of crime these days. They love people, like I said, people love to see newspapers with crime. crime. Mm -hmm. um, today's front page of the Kaicho News, Ms. Harris, displayed the worst kind the worst set of crimes one can imagine against people of this country. Mm -hmm. And if you guys look at it, you have it online? Can you put it up online there? If you guys look at that front page, you know, that for me is crime today. Crime against the Guyanese people. Mm -hmm. um, just look at it. Last night when I finished doing that front page, I had to share it to the entire um, contact list in my, in my phone. I got some response that I don't want to share with you guys. It wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, Ms. Harris. I have lived long enough to conform a saying I heard many, many moons ago. That this world has no room for fools. Greedy and selfish people makes the world into a doggy dog world. Don't keep your head on, Miss Harris, and you will be taken for more than a ride in this world today. Mm. Yeah, that's the world we're living in, Uncle and Auntie. That's the world we're living in today, where decency, care, and love for each other is a thing of the past for some people. Yeah. Mankind has reached the point where they will sell their own parents for material gain, much less do anything else or with what they will do to, with strangers. And I now begin my presentation, Ms. Harris. I spent two and a half hours yesterday <coughs> listening to a live presentation by a white man at Duke Lodge, an organization called Rested Energy 
sent him to present their study, a report on Guyana's oil sector. Ms. Harris, according to the company website that sent this man, they're the biggest independent energy consultancy firm and business intel company. And guess where the headquarters are based? In Oslo, Norway. <coughs> yes. Do they have money? Mm -hmm. Reputable, nice country, beautiful country. According to the website, Ms. Harris, they are a world-leading analytical company for the oil and gas sector. You hear who they are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Analytical company for the oil and gas sector. Ms. Harris, they prepared a beautiful study, a lovely report as to what every Guyanese should expect from our oil in terms of dollars, money. <laughs> Money. You hear me? Mm -hmm. As I sat there watching the slides and listening to that man, one question keep repeating itself in my mind. Who sent this man to Guyana? <laughs> Who sent him? <laughs> Who he think he can fool with the information on those slides, Miss Harris? You know, that is what was playing on my mind as I was listening to him. Mm -hmm. Every single thing this man presented to the audience was adding salt plus pepper to our open sores we are living with on this oil deal with ExxonMobil. Yeah. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Everything he said is just adding salt and pepper to the sore. The sore we already have with the Exxon deal. Yeah. The man's name is Shriner Packer. Yes. He presented the report to the Guyanese business community and invited the press and other stakeholders yesterday afternoon at the Duke Lodge. The document he presented, <coughs> Uncle, I had to ask him, who pay him to come to Guyana to deliver that presentation? Because it was very, very clear that he must have been paid directly by the government of Guyana and ExxonMobil to shoot that nonsense in our faces. As he was going through the slides during his presentation, uncle, my stomach was eating up. With another question inside, why would these white people come to our country and disrespect us in this fashion? If he comes back to Guyana, Miss Harris, and makes another pre presentation like that, he, this guy really got nerve, plus stones. I will now talk a little about the outright garbage and misleading information along with a pipe dream yes they come up with they derived yes he and his organization I don't know if they concoct it or what word to use how they arrive at this pipe dream yes to sell to Guyana and have us believe when I tell you, Miss Harris, that this man was disrespectful throughout his presentation, please believe me, Uncle. Auntie, please believe me. He said Guyana was the second poorest country after Haiti. And how <laughs> finding oil is the best thing for Guyana. You know what I mean, Miss Harris? Man, <laughs> when he said that, I had to look around the audience to see the facial expression of the people present when he said Guyana was the second poorest country in this hemisphere. And what this new found oil wealth will do for us. I had to look back, man. You know? 
during his presentation, uncle, he said Guyana take would be 59%. Wow. <laughs> yes, 59%. Yeah, man. Well, he said Guyana. All right. mm -hmm. Christopher Ram, a Tony at law, and an and a, and chartered accountant, then asked him what kind of jumbi mats he used to arrive at 59%, when Guyana only getting 50% profit sharing and 2% royalty. Miss <laughs> wow. Harris, if I am to explain this man's answer. I have to go to the university he went to, yes, to understand what he was telling the Guyanese people at that forum yesterday. 50% profit share and 2% royalty equal 59%, according to Hijon Bimax. This is the kind of insult, disrespect, and contempt they have for brown, black, and purple people like us. Uncle and Auntie. I have some tapes that I want to play for you guys, and I want you guys to listen because I love technology. One sec, Mr. Rowe. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not going to give a synopsis. In fact, I have several questions, but in fairness to my colleagues, I want to, I want to ask an opening question that would help to place in context what we have heard this afternoon. The presenter, the qualifications of the presenter or the entire range of expertise that went into this study was not explained to us this afternoon. We heard on technical, environmental, economic, fiscal, and financial issues. What I'd like to know is whether this study, as it is called, has been subject to any form of peer review, internal or preferably external, and if so, by whom. If it is not peer reviewed, would the presenter agree that it is not only authoritative, but its reliability is compromised? That's my opening question, sir. Thank you. Trina, you want to um, go ahead? Yes, Mr. thank you. Ms. Ram, you have subsequent questions, I, I assume. Ye yes, quite a few. All right, so um, maybe Shrina can go, um, and then you can ask, and we can have it in a conversant manner. Yes, well, thank you very much for, for that question. And um, maybe I can start by explaining a, a little bit about um, Reistat Energy and, and who we are. Um, Reistat Energy, again, is an independent research and consulting house um, that periodically puts out um, these types of um, reports for the consumption of the general public because we believe it's uh, of interest. This paper has not been peer-reviewed, but nothing that Reistat Energy publishes is peer-reviewed. This is 100% um, our own take on the situation here, uh, according to our own uh, ability to gather research, our proprietary models, which uh, allow us to do our forecasting, and the long experience that we've had in this business. Um, so. To that standpoint, um, I would probably say that we may be comparing apples to oranges. This is not an academic paper that we feel needs to be peer-reviewed. It is an interest piece that we put out for our readership and for the wider, uh, for the wider industry, um, but take it for what it is, which is um, the thoughts and opinions and uh, proprietary forecasts of Rysad Energy, again, uh, in our normal line of business. Thank you. Mr. Ram. Mm -hmm. I'll go again there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, peer review. Uncle and Auntie, the man was asked about his qualifications. And on to now, you listen to him, he did not answer that question. 
he was asked about the qualifications of the people who prepared the so-called report and he ain't answered that one too. Then he was asked by Mr. Ram if the report he spoke on was peer-reviewed. <laughs> Meaning, uncle, if any other oil and gas experts outside of his company review or looked over the report to authenticate what he is bringing to Guyana is fair, valid, and accurate. That was the question Christopher Ram asked him. He reluctantly said it was not reviewed or examined by any other expert. In fact, he said nothing they, they do, meaning his company, is reviewed by any expert. It is just their thoughts and opinions, their composition, <laughs> that they are disguising as an expert study. You hear that? Mm -hmm. If nothing is being reviewed, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. By other experts, then it's not a report, it's not a study. It's, their, it's a composition they write. It's our thoughts and opinions. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, their composition that they are disguising as an expert study. You believe this thing? So he confirmed to, to, to Ram and all of us and the audience that it is not a proper study he pushing down with truth. It's a makeup paper, whatever we feel good about with their opinion and thoughts. Yes, that's what he brings to Guyana. And masquerading himself as an international study out of Norway. You hear them? <laughs> their opinion, uncle, their makeup story with figures plucked from nowhere is what the clungs in Guyana, our politicians, using to make US billion dollar investments. Like the gas to shore, yes. Like the gas to shore project. And then Guyana <laughs> telling us that we will make a lot of money out of it. <laughs> Miss Harris, you notice he didn't answer the question about his qualifications or who prepared the report? Mm -hmm. He did not. Nope. But let's move on. You have another tape to play for him. You play the next Christopher Ram tape. Um. So it's not been peer reviewed or any similar. And I did ask about internal checks as well, but let me go on. Now, because of a misunderstanding of our legislation, we have given as a single block one of the largest contract areas in offshore oil production. We have multiple projects within a concentrated area. One significant event in just one of the wells could have impact, adversely impact, several, if not the entire block. How has this study taken care and taken account of such a possibility, which of course has exponential implications? I would, if I can, can I ask another question? I, I think, uh, Shreiner, you want to just respond to that because that was pretty loaded in its construct, yeah. Um, sure. Um, yeah, I guess uh, part of the scope of the study was not to um, sort of hypothesize or postulate as to potential environmental disasters. Uh, maybe you're referring to something akin to the Macondo incident in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, that was not a part of the scope uh, of the study. Um, and again, I would probably say that um, that may be you know, somewhat um, outside of what we do in general. What we like to do is take facts and extrapolate those forward um, rather than sort of hypothesize about um, hypothetical um, situations. But um, certainly that could be of interest um, to others. and. Um, 
but uh, again, a bit outside of the scope of um, what the study was intended to do for our readership and uh, what we intended to to put out to the to the general public. Sure. Thank you, Shreina. Well, well if, if I may, just as a follow-up, well, did you offer that as a cautionary note in this this study that you put out? Yeah, I think it's probably um, understood and um, incumbent on everyone to know that you should always use best operating practices to avoid any type of disaster, let's say. But um, again, that's maybe a bit further outside of, of our scope in terms of um, uh, hypothesizing or using hypotheticals um, for future, uh, to, 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 to kind of assess the potential for future damages as such. Sure. Mr. Ram, one more question perhaps and then we go to uh, Mr. Lau. Well, first of all, if I may just follow up there, not with a question, with a comment. Um, I wasn't only talking about environmental spills, but technical issues, etc. All those, every one of those, e essentially um, make the possibilities exponential, and they ought not to be, dis uh, to be dismissed as hypothetical. They are real in the petroleum sector. Exactly. exactly. Ms. Harris, mm -hmm. you ever hear the word Baba Weave? And dance? Yes. yes. Well, that is what that man was doing. Mm -hmm. with, the sim with the question Chris Christopher Ram would have asked. In a nutshell, Christopher Ram asked him if the report he bring to Guyana accounted for the various environmental and technical risks in the massive Starbrook block. And if his company took them into consideration when putting together their thoughts and their opinions in this report. That's basically what Christopher Ram asked him. Yeah. You know? In short, the man said that the study he bring to Guyana didn't touch that aspect. And that wasn't taken into consideration while putting together their thoughts. But still telling me how many billions Guyana will get by 2040. <laughs> <laughs> uncle, uncle and auntie, a great disaster which can destroy the country and the entire region that will put us in debt forever. The filmsy report, speaking nothing, said nothing of that, but rather it focuses on the few cents we can get. <laughs> you hear that? The damage, the destruction. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter in, in their report. Money. Yes, they focus on the dollar. He come here with a rosy picture that by 2040, Guyana will get 157 billion US dollar. Where he plucked the figure from, only he, his company and God Almighty know. Yeah. The man said to Chris Ram that they like to take facts rather than consider hypothetical situations. And what Chris Ram asked him falls outside of what they intended to share with their readership. You hear that? Wow. <laughs> that fall outside the scope of what they want their readers to read. Yes, or, or the people to know. Yeah. In other words, Ms. Harris, the man is saying, we don't want our readership to even consider the danger that could destroy everything. The entire oil operation. You hear that? Yeah. He don't want the people to know that. The danger that could destroy the operation. No, of course not. The man tells us that the report they prepare is giving us what we want to hear, you hear that? <laughs> the report he gave us, they are giving us, is what the Guyanese people want to hear. That's what he means with all those fancy language he used yesterday in his presentation that you just listened to. You want to hear how you're going to get money, uncle? That is what he's telling you. 
Nothing else. He don't care about anything else. He don't want to hurt your head and tell you that a well blew out could destroy the entire region and Guyana. No. He don't want you to hear that. To add that in their report, Ms. Harris, would not benefit the oil companies who will have to take on the responsibility when something goes wrong out there. And they didn't do the study to focus on the dangers and negatives. Them study is only for tell you. Yes, tell the Guyanese people money is there for you without any facts or figures presented. Mm -hmm. Uncle, when Christopher Ram asked him why they didn't disclose that <laughs> in the report, why they didn't include that aspect in the study, <laughs> the man responded by saying, it is understood that everybody got to use best operating practices to avoid such disasters and to include that would have been outside the scope of the report they wanted to present to Guyana. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes. To include that, to include that in their report would have been outside the scope of the report they want to present to the Guyanese people, the target. <laughs> he said anyone else who is interested in checking that part, Christopher Ram talk about, uh, is free to do so. <laughs> so it means somebody else got to come back and do a special report on that part that Christopher Ram talk about. He and his company, yes. He and his company only dealing with the money and how much billions Guyana going to get. Yes. With fictitious figures. No facts. Where environmental risks and disasters are concerned, they are not touching that uncle. That's not in them report. That's basically what that man said in a nutshell. Auntie, you heard Christopher Ram confronting him, telling him this is not a walk in the park. This is serious issues Guyana has to face and it should not be discounted or even dismissed. It should have been at the beginning of his study that he wants to bring to Guyana. But all he's saying is that they didn't deal with that. That's all he said. Now, uncle, you will hear the questions I posed to him. Could you please play one of my questions as? Is there any other country on earth that Guyana beats them? Uh, sorry, could you just repeat Guyana, that last one? Guyana, is there any oil contract that resembles the one that Guyana has now? You know of any on earth? Production sharing contracts are very common and uh, came about um, after the concession contracts, which um, were sort of the first type of oil and gas contracts um, that were um, sort of became prevalent in the world, which had to do with just royalty. Of course, production sharing contracts mean that the government gets to share in the production and gets the physical barrels. So with Guyana's particular scenario, there are several production sharing contracts around the world that include a royalty component as well as a profit sharing component. So I, I would say that, you know, there are several examples of different production sharing contracts or production sharing agreements, PSCs or PSAs, whichever you'd like to call them, that um, are quite similar maybe to I should, Maybe I should China. just make my question a bit clearer. We have a 2% royalty recoverable. We have a 50-50 profit sharing agreement with the PSA. And that was my question to you. Does that mirror any other contract on art today? There are many other production sharing contracts that have a royalty component and a profit sharing component. Whether there is a PSC that has a 2% royalty component with a 50% 
production sharing uh, component, I, I can't say off the top of my head, but um, I certainly know that um, many PSCs in the world have a royalty component and a profit share component. That's not my question. You, right. keep, you so, keep dancing with the question. Auntie and uncle, you have heard clearly how this man working for a company that holds itself up like the Pope of the world. Dancing around a simple question, I ask. If he knows any other country in the world that got a 2% royalty with a 50-50 profit sharing like Guyana. That was my question to the man. This man had just boasted how his company is the leading energy consultant doing analysis, studies, reports in all the oil countries around the world. They are making forecasts 20 and 30 years into the future. But this man, Shriner Parker, couldn't tell us which country on earth has a contract like Guyana. He was dancing around telling us that all contracts got royalty and profit sharing. <laughs> Nothing new there, sir. That wasn't the question I asked. We know everybody got hand and foot. The question was who hand and foot get chopped off like we own with the oil contract, Mr. Parker. But uncle, this is a slick game. These people come to play with the Guyanese people. Yes, I asked the man a simple question. We got a 2% or a 50-50 royalty. If he knows any other country on earth that has a, 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 such a contract. Having studied and did reports and, and, and analysis on actually all the oil producing countries, they would have seen, understand, and know every one of the contracts. That he's dancing with me, telling me that oil, all, telling us that all PSA has the same percentage, royalty percentage, and profit sharing. <laughs> Could you play next one, the next portion of it? Yeah, okay. I think you had a couple of other questions before, yes. so maybe let's just get the answers to okay. those before we um, go on on it. I think you asked how the NRF Act was passed. Was passed if you, yes. um, if, upon what basis did he assess the gas, the energy project being viable? Beautiful. And I think the force was if he was being paid by government or yes. so. Yes. So, Shrine, if you want to answer those. Guys. Sure. Let's, um, let's go in chronological order there, um, which... Uh, yeah, you know, our research into how the National, uh, the Natural Resource Fund Act was passed is probably superficial to yours um, because you're here and you're, you're looking that on, on a daily basis. What our intent to do um, in this report was to say that it has been created. And that in and of itself is significant because there are many countries that don't have a sovereign wealth fund, that don't have a natural resource fund. And so I think it's important to note that distinction between what does and doesn't exist. Our intent, of course, was not to come and inform you about the legislation that has taken place here, because again, you know that much better. Uh, our intent with this report, of course, is to inform a wider readership here in Guyana and outside of Guyana um, about the sort of macro elements of this. So you'll know better than me about the intricacies of how the Natural Resource Fund was um, passed, but I think our intent was to say that it was passed and that it does exist, which is a differentiator from other countries on Earth which do not have such a fund. <laughs> Ms. Harris, when you listen to these people, you just have to grin, smile, or down your head. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't concern how the Natural Resource Fund Act was passed. That's what he mean. That's what he, that's what he's telling yeah, us. Yeah. He don't concern. Basically. He don't concern what is inside the Natural Resource Fund Act. How it sets the stage for corruption. How it allows the government 
to take out all the oil money. And how there's no jail time for how they spend it or what they choose to do with it. That is of no concern to this white man. He's just proud that you would have a law specifically passed for the oil money. <laughs> you heard him say that there are many countries that don't have a natural resource for an act. The mere fact that Guyana got one, we should be proud. <laughs> Hear that, Ms. Harris? Mm -hmm. That's what the man said. The mere fact that we got one, we should be proud. Want to thief out all the money with no jail time. He is proud to put that in his report. Mm -hmm. Yes. To tell the world that Guyana has or Guyana parliament pass a law. Yes, of such nature. In a nutshell, uncle, the man is saying all they concerned about is that a law was passed where it allows them to thief out the oil money, squander it, give it away to their fi family or their friends, or whatever they do with it is not their business. <laughs> now hear what he said about the gas, the shore project? I think the gas, the energy project and its viability, that, that question. Yeah, so um, not only do we think it's viable, but we think it's necessary um, because you have this gas that is going to be produced no matter what. It's associated gas, so it comes out of the ground with the oil. There are sort of three options with the gas. One is reinjecting, and again, that will happen because reinjection shores up the reservoir pressure. And so that's part of the natural production scheme. The second is flaring. And I think we all know and agree that um, flaring is now very, um, let's say, not in vogue um, for environmental reasons and for several different reasons. So if you take those two, there's only one option left for what to do with the gas, and that's to bring it back to shore. So if you're not going to flare it and you can't re-inject 100% of the gas back into the reservoir, what to do? bring it back to shore. So not only is it viable, but it's necessary um, because you're not going to flare 100% of the gas that's not being re-injected. So bringing the gas back to shore is sort of uh, mutually beneficial, right? It helps the, the contractor because they're not allowed to do 100% flaring, nor would they. And then secondarily, it helps the, the, the populace of Guyana by taking the electricity price down significantly and weaning the country of Guyana off of the dependency on of diesel and heavy fuel that is currently making up 90% of the power generation within the 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 country. So when I you think say, when viable you say, and necessary. When you say we need to see Guyana, when you earlier said I see and we need, like you're saying we need to see Guyana this and Guyana that, you have not, you're still not answer the question I asked. You said the gas is viable via the gas, the shore project. How did you arrive at that? But viable and necessary. Um, and, and again, I would just go back to the, the, the point that there's only three things to do with the gas. We understand that. We don't want to hear that. You painted a picture that the gas to shore project is viable and best for Guyana. Have you taken into consideration re other renewables that is cheaper and cleaner? So, Glenn, are you talking about financial viability? Financial viability and also now, I'm adding a, a, another dimension to my question. Have you taken into consideration other uh, renewables? So financial and competing. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, of course, um, natural gas doesn't exist in a vacuum. I mean, there are many other, the, the fact that you're bringing gas back to shore to lower electricity costs doesn't mean that you can't pursue other renewable projects. Um, they're not mutually exclusive. What I would say to you is that natural gas, they're, they're, you know, they're, there's only three destinations for this gas. And I would assume that you would also agree that flaring the natural gas is not in the best interest of the country of Guyana. And My concern, sir, is not whether they flare it or they re-inject it. My concern is the project we are heading into 
what it's going to do to Guyana, where it's taking Guyana. And you're painting a picture, standing there painting a picture, how viable financially it, it will be without any facts or figures right. to present to us. That's it. You, the, the, the guy said, <clears throat> bring the garbage to shore. That's what, that's what he basically saying. When, <clears throat> when I confronted him about how he arrived at his conclusion that gas to shore will benefit Guyana, all he could have said <laughs> was that the country had three options. Re-inject it, <clears throat> flare it, or bring it to shore. That was not the question I put to him, Ms. Harris. I specifically asked how he know this gas to shore is financially viable for the people of this country, especially when renewables like solar is much cheaper and cleaner today. He then boiled down, yes, to low gravy and said that he company do an internal study but he can't talk about it because he don't know, know it too well. He said he going to give me a business card to send me the study. That's what he said to me. Those two words, it is viable and necessary to come to land, Miss Harris. This is where he's selling Guyana propaganda and indepting all of us. He said the gas coming to shore will be a boost to Exxon with its operations and at the same time be profitable for Guyana. He said all of this without any facts or figures to back up the deceitfulness coming out of his mouth. He said we need Guyana to come off diesel, an expensive heavy fuel that we, we, he talk about it's not me and you, uncle. The we we talk about is not me and you. It's the government and ExxonMobil speech he memorized and spit out back to us there. The man even remember what Jack Dale and ExxonMobil been selling Guyana on this gas to show project. Electricity bill will cut in half. But he doesn't know if it do cut by half, it will still be double what solar can produce electricity for at present. He doesn't, he's not telling us that. But he's busy selling ExxonMobil and Jack Dale propaganda with his gas to shore onto our backs and in our face. Play on the next tape, let him hear. Did you take the, the, that the taxes? ExxonMobil pays no taxes in this country. Did you take into consideration that this country is at the mercy of God Almighty where liability coverage is concerned? Did you take into consideration when you were talking about the $157 billion Guyana, Guyana is set to receive by 2040 that there is no ring fencing provision? Did you take into consideration that there is no, other than the taxes and the insurance and the ring fencing, the 2% royalty that this country is receiving is being recovered. Yeah, so we did take into consideration the taxes, and we know that taxes are paid by the government, which is, uh, again, uh, um, something that's traditional in, to, in a expiration, a frontier expiration, um, area like Guyana. And I think what I would do is, if, if you're going to employ hyperbole, maybe I'll employ some as well, which is that Guyana was the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, only beat out by Haiti before this, before this oil industry has developed. Now Guyana will become one of the richest countries per capita in the, in, in the Western Hemisphere, and, and really in the world, if you think about it. So um, I think it is important and in, uh, to, you know, again, think about the fact of where we, 
where you where you were and where you're going. And so for me to say that things are heading in the right direction, of course you have a different opinion. And that's what we're exchanging here is opinions. Our piece is an opinion piece, just as your pieces are opinion pieces. You've said that I've not brought any fact and figures, but of course the report is available to you full of facts and figures, which I'm sure that you'll go through and in your own time and, and be able to assess your opinion on those facts and figures. But I think if we're, if we're looking at the broader and wider arc, that it's certainly a success story and it will be a success story for the people of Guyana. <laughs> Ms. Harris, mm -hmm. I ask him if he took into consideration that Exxon pays no taxes, that Guyana is at the mercy of God where liability coverage is concerned, that there is no ring fencing provision, that there is nothing, not even taxes to fall back on. And the 2% royalty we are getting is being recovered. This is where he got very disrespectful by telling us how Guyana was the second poorest country behind Haiti in this hemisphere. And it's oil what saved us and will make us the richest people on earth. <laughs> I want this man to know that all the financial institutions of this world, including the IMF, IDB, CDB, World Bank, don't list us as the richest and fastest growing economy on earth. But where are we today, Mr. Parker? Hmm? Where are we? What have the citizens of this country received after pumping billions of US dollars in oil three years now? Huh? What have we gotten? We're still borrowing money to feed ourselves. We're stretching, we hand like beggars in the fastest growing economy to collect loans, left, right, and center across the globe. While he failed to address in his report that the oil companies boasting about the billions they're fetching out every three months, Ms. Harris. He failed to, to, to address that. The oil companies them boasting how much they're fetching out. And he telling me how much cents we will get while we're borrowing money to eat and live. Brothers and sisters, I may sound rude, but I found this presentation yesterday very degrading and disrespectful to this nation. And you can see it in my face. I hope you can hear it in my voice too. People like this man should not be allowed at any forum, much less a business forum, to speak to this nation on our oil. Not with what I heard him telling us last night. Bernard, you're late. But thank you for coming. I've been listening. I've not thank been you. Listening. Bernard, two things he said that really bring out the white slave master in him. Yes, sir. That really upset me, man. Yes, sir. It is not only what he said, but how he said it. Yes. He told us at that audience that Guyana was the second poorest country in this hemisphere, behind Haiti. What's the relevance of that? And we should be thankful that oil came and rescued us. Oil came and rescued us. You hear that? This is a rescue. Huh? No. Would, he, would, he tell, would he say that to Norway, the Norwegian government? Would he say that? Who? Who oil is rescuing in this country? Auntie and uncle? The oil is a mobile. You? Me? Your children? No. It's rescuing the oil companies and their families with their country. The other thing he talked about, Ms. Harris, is how Guyana democracy gives us freedom to write whatever we want. 
He seemed very upset that my reporter would have carried a story the day before exposing the so-called study and pointing out that it mirrors the government and ExxonMobil's propaganda to the nation. Propaganda keyword. Bernard, when you read between the lines, what he's actually saying there, the newspaper should write and report whatever filth, garbage and slime they come and throw at us. He believed like he is the new slave master. And how dare we, from the Kaicho News, write about and criticize what they present to us. Black and brown people across. Who are we to challenge their propaganda makeup stories? Yes. That's what he's actually telling us. Definitely. Yes, sir. 100%. Yes. It is the way how the man said it, Bernard. The arrogance. We should be thankful. We have a democracy and the privileges that come with it. In his mind, Bernard, third world countries with brown, black and purple people like us should forever be slave. Yeah, we should be like slave to people like them yes, and take what they give us yes. from our own thing and shut up. He wants us to be like Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria, yes. Sir. As for the comparison with Haiti and Guyana being rescued by oil, these people should not be allowed to enter Guyana anymore. They should not be allowed to pass through immigration at Timiri. Hell yes. Yes, sir. 100%. Let alone, let alone be given a platform to shovel the garbage he brings from Norway down with throats. Bernard, what that guy did yesterday reminded me of the two white men that was building the cement factory in South Rhinevelt. Yes. And when the city council and the minister, one of the ministers asked them to see the permits, the approval for the factory, they chased them out of the compound. Uh -huh. That's the arrogance they had. The foreign, the foreign international wealth stealers, yes, the new slave masters have no respect for us non-white people. Why would they? You know, Ms. Mr. Bernard, I, I want to congratulate Christopher Ram. 100%. Dennis Chabral of the Emerald Waves and Marcel Thomas of Starbrook News and the rest of the attendees who saw through the rosy, misleading and deceptive picture this guy was painted was painting during that presentation uncle and auntie i want to end by saying i am really upset and angry that our government would continue to bring in white people like these to lecture us about democracy poverty and freedom and how we are going to have it with this oil fine without any facts or figures. I think people like Parker and his company, along with Exxon, believe this is Africa, you know. 100%. You know, they believe this is Africa. Yes, we should shut up. Okay. Where they collaborate with corrupt African leaders who sell out their country's wealth. And everyone remains silent. Has to be because they, they be killed. Bernard, Torture. that Torture. wouldn't happen here. It will never happen here. The Guyanese people, including Glen Lal, would not allow that to happen here Hell in no. Guyana. Hell no. You know, <laughs> Bernard, when the questions were thrown at him, he changed from a white man to a Portuguese man. He turned pink. He never bargained for what he would have met yesterday. You could hear it in his voice. I am told he came here in 2016 and had a field day because in 2016 we weren't that verse. We did 
with what was going on. We didn't know much. But he come and he get a wake up call. Miss Harris, with that I want to say good night. Thanks to all you guys for listening. And God bless you guys. Enjoy the weekend. So, with that I say, let's take a few calls before I get grab on to a glass of wine. Bernard, would you like to say yes, something? Yes, the numbers. Let me just tell let everybody the numbers. The numbers, everyone, are 226-7453 and 226-7454-622-2222. Those are the numbers if you wish to call us to engage in this discussion. I'm sure many of you, as on Facebook, have a lot to say about this. Some people, you want to hear some comments? Or? Yes, go ahead. Miss, as you go, let me cool my temperature down a little bit. All right, there's some watch over there. <laughs> so some people are saying, there's some really good comments here. Let me find them. Um... So, somebody saying, many scientists, Paul said, many scientists, lawyers, environmentalists are working for ExxonMobil to spread propaganda for ExxonMobil. Mm -hmm. Read ExxonMobil and American Empire. Also read Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Mm -hmm. Excellent books. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a call here. Good evening, caller. Hi, good night. Good night. Night, night. You're live on the air. This is Mr. Bellagio. Yes, it is. Okay, tell him for me, I love that speech that he gave. Yeah, he's listening. Your life on here, go ahead. I, I give him I give a lot of credit for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Speak very well. Yep, any, no questions? Right, or you, you just want to say, all right, thank you. No, 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 just I want to congratulate him. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a question came to my phone here. Yeah. Mr. Lal. Christopher Ammon yourself sounded very upset asking your questions. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, a man coming in your house to rub pepper and salt in a wound you have. Raping your daughters and wife in front of you, man. That's what they're doing. Exactly. There. They're raping your daughters and wife. Raping your family in front in of you. And tell you to shut up and stay quiet. Mm -hmm. You must smile with them. That's what you want Christopher Ram and Glenn Lal to do. Not and but I think too, man. Sorry, my friend. I can't do that. I got a call here. Good evening, Hello. caller. Good night. You're live. Is this, this is Kaicho News. This is Kaicho News, the Glenn Lal Show. Yes, yes, okay. I'm glad to get to and Lal. Let me have a word with you, please. Yeah, Go he's ahead, you're live. You're live on he's hearing you. Yep, he can hear you. Yes, tell him I said that he cannot do this work here alone, mm -hmm. right? He has to have other people around him. Now, the reason why I say this is because you have leaders that we entrust in doing our jobs. And a man came with a package and handed it to our leaders and tell our leaders that, um, look, you take this package and don't worry to anybody else. Then you cannot, you cannot watch the airport. Trust our leaders then mm -hmm. to do anything because you can't blame the white man. The white man gave the package and gave it to our leaders, our leaders that we trusted. Mm -hmm. And they take the package and do what they want with it and forget about us. So Mr. Lal cannot do this by himself. Mm -hmm. Right? He has to get help. So are you going to join us? Ask him, tell him I said that he must get help. He's listening. He alone can't do it. He's he pushing himself too much. Okay. Are you going to join us? That's a question. Are you going to join us? Will you join us well, when I, the protest restarts? I'm, 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 I'm too old now. I'm 70 no, years old. I am never really fatigued, right? But, but Allah, you're doing a good job. Thank but you. Just a reminder, you can't do it alone. All right. You have to get both races or all your races to come out and do it. You're doing a good job. I enjoy you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your show and sport. You're doing a good job. But you don't lead the job to blame. You can't blame the white man who come here with a package. Mm. You asked this one too, too. He said the same thing. He said when the white man came to South Africa, he came with a book. The Bible. To teach them to read. Tell them close their eyes. I went to open the eyes. Of the white man Everything had the book was on the gone. Land. Everything was not gone. The book. He came, that was not the book. Was the book and the not the book. He came with the Bible. After the, the Bible. After the inauguration of Mandela, you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. He said, after all, we end up with both back. Mm -hmm. The book and the land, because we know for read. <laughs> so it is our leaders who we have to blame, not the white people who come here with the tricks. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So please tell Mr. Lani he alone can handle it, right? He's listening Thank to you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Uh, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You have to join us, my friend. Um, this is a guy in his Oh, Glenn. we got another one? Go ahead. Take it. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the Glenn Lyle Show. You're live on the air. Like you're not going to get yeah, you? Good night. Um, my question is based upon the share that Ghana gets from the, um, the oil. Mm-hmm. When we started this production, we was getting 5 million barrels a year. <clears throat> that was with, with, with the one FPS. So in order to bring two on, could Mr. Lyle see if he gets him more? Um, more more oil every year is the same five million bar we get in. And if it's the same five million bar we get in, I mean extra making a, a bigger killing, so to speak. Indeed. They are. Thank you. Are you gonna stay no. on the line or no they yes, are not the response? All right, thank you. The eleven percent haven't changed, Glenn. The eleven percent we are getting. Well, of course me. of course we have been getting a little more m- more um, numbers shipload as mm. they began pumping in Lisa too. But the percentage is still the same. But the percentage, it's the the two percent, nothing, still remain the same way. And it's still a worse in the world. Mm-hmm. Glenn, excuse me, sorry to ding it. Um, the gentleman before spoke about, about Glenn uh, getting help, needs m- more help. Um, I fully agree with you, sir. I fully agree with you. But I have said it and let me repeat again. This oil sector, this oil business, is not your run-of-the-mill, everyday bura baji or sugarcane or planting rice business. It's a very complex issue we're dealing with. And uh, it takes a while for people to come to grips to understand what is happening. If you look at the media, media operatives, they are sailing and they are, the, they are the people who we should be looking out to for help. But they are, they are increasing with their knowledge on a daily basis. But it will take some time. My Trini friend who spent 36 years in the oil industry said to me, Glenn, Trinidad took 40, 50 years to understand how they were being robbed. And let me tell you this, my friend. As, as intelligent as Trinidad is in the, in the energy sector for over 100 years, just two years ago, Keith Rowley, the Prime Minister, or the people of Trinidad and Tobago, caught a loophole in which British Petroleum were robbing them $2 billion a year. <laughs> 150 and, years later. And Keith Rowley had to open his mouth and get them to repay, to, to block the loophole and get them to repay some of the money. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not a small business. It's not a, it's not a large. It's not a huge business. This oil sector is a gigantic business. So yes, people, even Glenn Lalas know much. I am just scratching the surface of this oil business and trying to bring out the little that we are learning on a daily basis. But it's enough to let you guys know and to let people understand so that we could have had that, that kind of discussion at the Duke Lodge yesterday. It was myself and Christopher Ram. Not boasting about it, but really had changed the, the white man into a Portuguese man with the questions because he didn't expect that we would have confronted him in that fashion. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Now you got another question? Hold on, I have somebody calling here. Oh, okay. Good evening, you're live on the air. Hey, good, good evening, Bruce. Um, I, I, I really enjoy your program, here, man. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, man. These people, these people, them, right? These people, them, are breathed, they, they are breathed, breathing on corruption, man. I hear you. These people, um, these people um, got this country in a state of chaos and agony. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and our, our, our people, um, our people um, need to open their, their eyes and see. Yes, sir. What is going on, man? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, slowly, 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 one day at a time, people are waking up, man. People are waking up. Right? Um, this thing, this, um, let me repeat this thing. This thing 
This thing is not about the government alone, you know. Your opposition is all involved in the selling out and giving away of this country. Every one of them. I played for you guys Wednesday, Aubrey Norton. His reaction when he was asked by my reporter about, renego about a renegotiation of the oil contract. He said plain. Don't talk to me about renegotiation. I'm not going to talk these about people, renegotiation. These people need to be investigated and jailed, man. Yes, they, they, these people live for hundreds of years. Even though these, these people, some of their, their physical uh, possession that they have, if they live about for a hundred years, they, will, they, they still will not earn what they have. Mm -hmm. I know. They are so um, corrupted, man, you know? But, you know, the sad part of it, right? And this, yeah, you, and this has nothing to do, this has nothing to do with party. I keep saying this thing, it has nothing to do with party. Which party you're from? Whether you're from EFC, uh, PNC, or PPP. It has nothing to do with, with party. This has nothing to do with race. African, Indian, Amor Indian, or whatever. It has nothing to do with it. This thing has to do with us as a people, my brother. Guyanese. And if, yeah, yeah. and if the politicians, if the politicians doesn't stand up for us, you hear me? We got to stand up for ourselves. Yeah, my brother, yeah. Right? I heard you, man. I heard you. And we can't look, we can't look at, at, at whether you're Hindu, you're Christian, or you're Muslim. We got to no, no. gotta look at this, this whole issue as one, as Guyanese, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Guyana right? stands, after these people would have drawn a, a, a wealth man, Guyana stands on its own, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the people then will, 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 will live here to face the burden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fight. It's a fight we got we to gotta take on right now, too. We can't wait too late, like Trinidad and yeah. Africa. Because today's technology, like I said, today's technology... They can empty, they can empty your, your oil field, like, it, with the twinkle of an eye. Yeah, Bernard, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Glenn, as I'm coming in, I listen to that guy, my blood is actually boiling. Mm -hmm. This man, in Guyanese term, as a Guyanese, you speak to Guyanese, this man take his eyes past me so much, it makes, how, when he cannot answer legitimate question you have, are there any other PS in the world that looks like Guyana? What does he do? He has to tell us we were the poorest country in the world. We know that. We are only the poorest country because of economics, not because of what we have, our resources. Mm -hmm. Guyana is the rich, to that fool, I'll tell him plainly, Guyana is the richest country in the world, sir. All right? Regardless of all the nonsense you're saying, we know we are the richest country in the world. And we're not going to tolerate your copy of nonsense. Mm -hmm. All right? We know we are rich country, and the oil, in, the oil in save us, Exxon Mobil didn't save us. Our oil saved Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil is going down, was down and out. Guyana's oil, not Guyana's oil, Guyanese fools for leaders who signed that agreement, giving away our resources to them, saved Exxon Mobil. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So let me tell you, Glenn, you are a patriot. Christopher, I'm a patriot. We need all patriots of this country to stand with us. Stand up for your fellow Guyanese. We cannot tolerate the nonsense and the, the, the insult these fools that come to, on, to our country and tell us who the hell is these are new slave masters. This is 2021. Slavery ended again in 1834. 1838, the last slave was freed, okay? I'd like to tell you, sir, this is 2022 in Guyana, and we are not going to tell it fools like you. You tell that nonsense. Are, are you, you think he has enough to go and say that in, in, in Norway? Right? Mm. This is a Norwegian company coming to Guyana. Mm. Their Norway has the, their, Jeep, their average person works for 50,000 US dollars a, a year. And you would have come to our country and tell us that we bum and black folks that what we have to thank you for, for enslaving us again? No, 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 sir. I'm going to tell you that. Indeed. We might be black and brown. We are, we are not stupid. But what you said, I'm thankful that you opened your mouth and insulted us so that our people can wake see up. and wake up. Mm -hmm. This should be a wake-up call to all Guyanese, whether you, whatever color, once you Guyanese, you ought to be offended by this nonsense, this fool is trying to tell us, force down our throat. Indeed. 
Mm-hmm. Right? He's lying to us and tell us that we must accept what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And because we have a democracy, that's why we could say it. Mm-hmm. In other words, he's telling us if it was a democracy, he will have the police to just shoot us and kill us and shut our mouth. That's what Precisely. he's telling us. Precisely. But I would tell you, sir, this is not Equatorial Guinea, this is not Nigeria, this is not Chad, this is not Sudan. This is the cooperative republic of Guyana, and we are democracy, like you say, and no one can tell us to shut up, especially when we are saying the right and the truth thing. We will not buy your propaganda, your nonsense, right? So when you take your nonsense back to Exxon Mobile, like give them this message from us, the Guyanese people, the intelligent Guyanese people. This is not 1920 or 1820. This mm-hmm. is 2022, and all intelligent Guyanese will stand up to idiots and fools like you and tell you to your face. Try that nonsense with somebody else in some other time. All right, thank you. I'm Bernard. done. I have a caller that's been trying to get through to us for a while. Go ahead. Caller, are you still there? Yes, I am. Thank you for your patience. Good night. <laughs> Welcome to the Glen Lyle Show. <laughs> okay. Good night, Mr. Lyle. Good night, good night, night. I must say kudos to you, kudos to you for standing up to these people when you question the media and job well done. We need a few more people like you to stand up oh, to these people. Oh, oh. Now, my opinion on the part with the opposition, mm-hmm. Mr. Granger has done a pretty much, pretty much a good job, I think. That's my opinion. I don't know how anybody else feel, but he did a good job by placing the National Resource Funds there in the for, for them to have that at least he did that and the PPP is destroying the country as well with that they're taking out the money they're not using it towards the stuff that Mr. Granger had placed that money there for so I think he's doing a good job he did a good job there and the, the PPP need to get realistic because they're not doing anything to benefit the Guyanese people whether they're having 2% royalty or 50% profit share or whatever because we're not seeing they're not transparent mm-hmm. enough for the Guyanese people to see what, what is going on with the oil money and the, the commodities that we have here is not only oil oil come now we had all of the other rest of commodity there. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I, that's my opinion thank you thank you very much thank you she the, the caller made a, a very uh, valid point um, Granger, Granger, um, thank you, Granger, Mr. Granger. Um, he had put the um, money aside. Uh, he, I think he had they, said, Yes, that was it, it was for emergencies such as oil spill, other things that come along with oil. Mm-hmm. They act one second, instead, one second instead of that, instead of that money being there for emergencies such as oil spill and stuff like that. The PPP, they, they keep drawing out the money. And God in heaven knows what it is being spent on. I'm not seeing any mm. progress or anything spending this money. Where this money is spending? Where are they putting this money? They didn't come up with the biggest budget. Yes, but we still punishing. My friend, could you hold a second? Contract. Yes. Contract. Can you hold a second? Yes. Okay. The act, yes, the act that the coalition government passed, the NRF Act, was, mm-hmm. was far better than the one this government this government put in place they put in place something that they can thief they opened the door with the oil money to thief and on the the act the act that was passed on the on the on the granger you could not huff the money like that but these guys go and and you (coughs) you guys would have remember you guys would have remember I came out Christmas Day out, out of my house to enlighten you as to what they were going to do with the act. 29th of December, when everybody drunk, they run gone pa- past uh, late in the night. <laughs> exactly. And that, the reason that another, another opinion that I have is they keep shutting the opposition out. The opposition don't have any say and kind of, they have no input in anything at all. And that is totally wrong because in all the years I've been looking at the following of politics, I know that both parties, when it's Dagon and Burnham time, both parties had say and both parties had input. You don't see that now with the PPP. The PPP is a one-sided, one-track, one-minded 
party. I, I don't see that they don't have that cooperation with the two parties anymore. I don't see that in the democracy anymore. The oil companies, the oil companies love it that way. Yes. When, what, 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 what they do, what they do, they, they create confusion. And they, they, right. joke a, they, they, they joke a spoke here and they joke a spoke there in, <laughs> in the bicycle. Yes. Okay. And, when, and, when they, when, and, and when we fight against each other, you know what they do. Glenn, but she's not saying that yeah. the, the, the opposition and the government are on the same page. You haven't heard the opposition say a word against the oil company. Both of them are on the same page when it comes to the oil contract. Mm -hmm. Everything else, they're on the opposition, but on the oil, they are both the same. But you're not saying that. No, well, she doesn't. She doesn't, she doesn't know. You, no, you're not, you're not noticing saying, that. Okay. Both had, of them it, had it had been Mr. Granger there, the people would be living a better life. That's what I'm trying to say. No, that is not Had it true. been Mr. Granger right. in power there, still the people would have been living a better life and we wouldn't have been going through all these, these hardships right now. No. And these, we, right. we would have been seeing things how it has been progressing. We would have been. I hear you, my dear. I hear you. I hear you. That's your belief. I hear you. Okay, Mr. Lal. I hear you. Thank you so much have for a good listening night. to Thank me. Have a good night. Much. Have a good Thanks. night. Take care. Good night. That's that's her belief. If she believed that, that's her belief. Leave her alone. We don't deal with beliefs on this show. No, 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 no. We got more calls. There's no facts. There's no facts on how how I believe about a leader. You're live on the air, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Good night. What my I was trying to say is that the we brothers and sisters in the diaspora. I would like to see that they give their voice also and let the people them know what our governments and what they what they are bargaining for and the raw deal that we are getting because I notice that they are they they are voicing their voice for other things that is taking place in Guyana mm -hmm. like racism and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see the deal that they they speak out also join you and speak out. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. That's yeah. a lovely statement. Yeah. The guy's right. The diaspora is not saying a word against the oil company. They they join and say the racist nonsense. But when it comes to stand up for Guyanese, they don't do that. The guy is one hundred percent right. All yeah. Guyanese, wherever you are in the world, mm -hmm. this is a Guyanese thing, no matter where you are. Every but Guyanese around the world has a right. Bernard, right. to where Bernard, they see you wrong to, to, to say something about it. Yeah. Bernard, everybody have have their views and everybody's entitled to their opinion yep. on any subject. And if the, the gentleman is saying that people should jump on the bandwagon on the of the of the contract. The bandwagon. Well, we every see everybody should hold one head on renegotiating the contract. <laughs> What the guy is trying to say that every guy should stand up for the rights of Guyanese. The guy is that's really, the guy never said jump. But back. people are standing up for their own reasons. The guy said that the Guyanese, the, the expat, he said they're following the Guyanese, they are the, the, the foreign based Guyanese. The Guyanese in diaspora, instead of jumping and fighting for the should get Guyanese and get their fair share, they're jumping on the racist nonsense. That's what the guy is saying. Mm. Right? Mm. But you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts, Glenn. Right? The guy is right. The guy is saying that Guyanese, instead of fighting for with your fellow Guyanese, forget a better deal for all Guyanese. Only the racist nonsense they jump on about. That's what the guy is saying. That's all he guys. Merry Christmas, Bernard. Do we uh, have any other comments here? Yeah, we seem, BB says, we seem to have lost a few hundred years and back to colonization. She then said, we certainly have very well-educated people within Guyana and mm -hmm. outside of Guyana. Mm -hmm. Let's call our hands on deck. Um, somebody s sent a comment mm -hmm. here. Nice comment. Um, yeah, very Wonderful. nice. That is what we need. Um, there are some good comments here. Somebody is asking about the um, what you think of Sadhguru. You remember Sadhguru came and he met with President Ali a couple mm -hmm. years ago and they discussed this save the soil thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the person says, I want to highlight that Sadhguru came again and the president behaving like he's concerned, but they should have taken him over to the degraded forest 
where those mining and logging concessions are nuff nuff and let the guru and others see there's no drive on the part of the past and now current governments to reclaim the lands that were badly mutilated because of man's greed for wealth mm -hmm. and tell him, Sadhguru, how all you get in is two larger gold mining companies coming to rob mm -hmm. our earth soil of its minerals mm -hmm. that lie therein. Double standards, save what soil? Mm -hmm. And Ashley Singh saying, more coming. Three more coming. More three, coming. The biggest one in the world coming. Yes. How it? Mm -hmm. Bauer is the largest, the largest mining company in the world. Coming, Bauer yes. Coming, yeah. uh, here, this one, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Rina says, the last female speaker is not fair. The opposition does not wish to participate as a decent group of parliamentarians. Always remember, a good government needs a strong opposition. APNU is lousy and weak. They cannot do maths for sure. They haven't said a word against the oil contract so far. That's true, so she's they, correct. They, they support the oil contract. They support, yes. the, they support the exploitation of all Guyanese. They, they, they support the exploitation of their own, their own supporters. They mm -hmm. are not saying a word again. Their supporters are suffering just like every other Guyanese. This is not a, this is not a PNC, PPP thing. This is a Guyanese thing. All Guyanese are suffering. So if you don't care about your own supporters, do you care about the opposition supporters? These people are not patriots. They're, these people are traitors to their to their country, a traitor is one who joins upon exploiters against their own people. That's the definition of traitor, of treason. Mm -hmm. You join with foreigners to, to whatever, to exploit your own people. They are treasoners, just like most of the foreign governments in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody also says, the diaspora is giving their voices, which I agree with, and making their voices heard. Every Friday, Saturday, we're on Liberty Avenue and mm -hmm. Sybil Square holding a banner and exposing the lopsided oil contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are people who are um, vocal in the yes, diaspora. Yes, slowly. Thank you, Mike Vassar. Um, Thank you, Mike Vassar and the rest of the um, Slowly, the there people. Are people. OGG, yeah. Thank you, OGG and Mike Vassar and the rest of the guys over here in Liberty Avenue. Yes, Thank slowly you. people are waking up, man. Yeah. It, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a long fight and it's a hard fight yeah so we just can't we just can't um, live in a in, in a world and think live in a dream uh, and think and this is gonna happen this is gonna happen right? tomorrow exactly no uncle. look at Nigeria Nigeria's mm -hmm. been pumping oil for half a century oh, wow. and Nigeria is look mm -hmm. at the situation in Nigeria what is it a hundred and how much billion in debt 108 billion in debt. 108 billion in <coughs> debt. And they have some of the worst levels of poverty and mm. some of the richest billionaires in Africa too. So people do the maths and get mm -hmm. sense. Any final remarks? It's tough. Yes. Um, if we don't have any, any other call, mm -hmm. I, would, I would love to um, say it's Friday and yep. I want, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward for a telephone call from somebody after I left here to buy me a glass of wine. I need a glass of wine to, to settle my throat <clears throat> because, and my face because I'm, a, I'm not totally upset. <laughs> I, get, I get a throat disease. That guy makes you want to gag. Yeah. He makes you want to choke out to Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody sad. is very upset with Mr. Parker. There are people it's asking sad. for him, and he is not a Norwegian. That is yeah. not a Norwegian man. That is a yes, Texan. Yes, and totally, he's, he's not Texan. even. Yes, he was born in Texas. Nor born Norwegian. and raised in Texas. Well, that, huh? he, he's born and raised in Texas. Oh, he's born and raised in Texas. In Texas, in the so great he, state of Texas. Exactly Where Exxon Mobil? Oh. Exactly. Well, there are people looking into his background. Thank you, you very much. That, <laughs> you that should have told me. That explains a lot. I, yes. Told me that he's from Texas. He's that, one. He, well, well he's what he said. oil pumping, gas guzzling Texan. Miss Harris, <laughs> what this man said yesterday. How, how the garbage, the gas, beneficial to both Exxon, Mobile, and Guyana. You know? <laughs> It tells you know just 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 was too insultive for me man. Yeah. Imagine Exxon have burned the gas, Exxon have throw it, Exxon have nowhere nowhere to put it, rather than flare it or reinject it. Or he himself said that the company cannot reinject all the gas. So then, if you can't reinject the gas and you can't flare you can't the gas flare, so you... for 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 you destroying the the, the 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 atmosphere, the 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 environment. Then the other option 
is to throw the garbage onto Guyana. Yes, and get us, and, to, get us to pay for it. And get us to pay Precise. for it. Most important, get us to pay for it. Yeah. If you're clever, most important to get us to cook pay up for it. Yeah, so you're paying so for garbage. Pay for it. Not only paying for it, pay billions of US dollars for it. Billions. It exactly. Billions. And exactly. not just one time, you create a system whereby you to continuously milk the country. Yeah, so the man come to sell Exxon Mobil project to Guyana, garbage to Guyana, you know? And if you listen to him, I'm, I'm like, but I didn't know the man was from Texas. The man is a Texan. Oh. I told you as soon as I heard him speak, you, I said you, that you, was a Texas accent. Folks, okay. Man. Okay, so yes, but well, Texas. he just he just stitching he just stitching Oslo, Norway, as the head as the headquarters. Yes, making us believe that that he was a Norwegian. No, no. he lived in Texas, but the headquarters of his company based in in Norway. I can understand no, that now. Like one other <laughs> you should have thing. told me that. One other quick thing: the way he speak, you the way he spoke to you and and, and Chris Farmer. Yes. The same way those white Texans speak to the black Texans. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of black there are a lot of black people in in Houston, and that's the way the white people talk to the black people in Texas. You know, Miss Harris. Yeah. I I want to believe yeah. that um, Exxon and the government. Yes. Um, they have been trying to put a spin, um, trying to to. They have been trying their best to sell Guyana, mm -hmm. this lopsided deal, mm -hmm. and they they haven't gotten anywhere. Nope. So of recent, I, I've, I've noticed they have picked up the steam of campaigning. Yes. Right? Campaigning in a sense with, with that, that, that nonsensical uh, post mm -hmm. the, the, the natural resource uh, minister put on the government website, comparing Guyana and Suriname. <laughs> and, and I am told that uh, Rutledge, Exxon manager, you know, um, take it, thumbs up it. Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, 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 when when I when I heard the man thumbs it thumbs up it, I said wait. He push he he push his hand from behind the blackboard and and and, and kick kick a star, <laughs> kick a star and hide his face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. so I I am not surprised I'm not surprised that this this guy come here oh. and trying trying to um to who, up who to up the heat yes. up the heat. One quick one. Uh, mm -hmm. A quick comment, actually. Let me do Paul a favor and say this. He said the diaspora has an, a, a symposium on oil and the lopsided contract on Saturday, the 13th of August on Liberty Avenue. Mm -hmm. Please come out and join us. Presenters are Vincent Adams, Dr. Jeanette Bulkan, uh, Taron Kemraj, nice. and virtual presenter will be Chris Ram. Oh, so beautiful. for those who are interested, I'm sure the event is going to be live streamed mm -hmm. and we'll probably hear some more about it before then. So keep in touch with us, Paul, and we would definitely help to promote that for oh, everyone maybe, who wants to watch it. Wonderful. Maybe, Miss Harris, we can, we can, stream it. We can arrange to have the program um, live streamed live streamed, yes. so that the world can listen it yes. via the Kaicho Radio. Wonderful. Yes, we can, yes, we, we, can, we, can, um, we can take that into consideration. Okay, um, having said that, um, mm -hmm. I just want to say I, I am looking forward to see uh, when Exxon or the government maybe will try to find a non-white to come sell another propaganda <laughs> to the Guyanese people. Okay. Please do enjoy the, um, the <laughs> weekend. That's what you until, know things get serious. Until Monday. Back, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Thanks, um, mm -hmm. Kevin. Uh, 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 uh,